the one I wanted to do is that new macro study on GLP ones, which I think is super interesting. Oh, tell us. You guys remember I talked a while ago about how they were able to mine VA data. So the VA, right, they they take care of veterans and they have all the medical records. And on an anonymized basis, they can make that data available to researchers. And so if you guys remember this, this is how they identified that the Epstein-Barr virus or the virus that causes mono as being statistically certain to be the trigger for multiple sclerosis. In the cohort of hundreds of thousands of patients that were in this, this data set, no one got MS that didn't get Epstein-Barr virus. If you did not get Epstein-Barr virus, you did not get MS. I don't know if you guys remember, I did the Science Corner a while ago. Anyway, so the data set that you can mine at the VA is incredible. So they pulled all the data from everyone that's been on the GLP-1 agonists, and they identified all of the health effects across multiple indications, the statistical difference between the cohorts. Mm. Okay, so this research team out of St. Louis pulled all the data from the VA database. And basically, they looked at, you know, 1.2 million people with diabetes that didn't take anything compared to 215,000 that took the GLP-1 receptor agonists and another 600,000 people that took other drugs for diabetes. So basically, this cohort segmentation allows mm. them to isolate the effect of the GLP-1 drugs. Um, and as you That's can incredible. see here... This shows across hundreds of thousands of patients the effect of the GLP-1 on a hazard ratio, which means like how likely are you to have the following health condition versus the population that's not taking the GLP-1s. And then uh, on the right, if you scroll to the right, Nick, are the increase in risk. And on the left are the things that go down. So the increase, the only thing that increased is like, you know, 8% or 10% increase in nausea and vomiting. Yep, um, can confirm. You know, uh, musculoskeletal complications, GRD, which is, you know, gastric reflux from sleep disturbances, indigestion. Yeah. yeah and, and sleep disturbance abdominal related pain. to indigestion. Yeah. So it's all abdominal stuff. Now, if you go over here to the benefit side, so the benefit side is what conditions did you see a decrease in? So you have a decrease in shock, a decrease in uh, hep hepatic failure. So liver failure, hmm. respiratory failure, cardiac arrest. In fact, on cardiac arrest, you see a 30% decrease in the probability of having cardiac arrest from the cohort that's on the GLP-1 versus the alternatives. Bulimia? Yeah. Wow. Schizophrenia. So, so this goes to the point, if you guys remember the interview I did a couple months ago with the CEO of Eli Lilly, that they have all these clinical trials going on right now for different indications for the GLP-1 receptor agonists that they're seeing that there's health benefits beyond just the weight loss in reducing things like kidney disease, obviously liver problems, mental problems, and do so we, on. Do we know why? And and if we don't know why, do you think it's because this is suppressing the food and it's the, the lack of food or the change in the food consumption that's creating this? Do, do you know what I'm asking? Like, do you think the drug is actually, yeah. yeah. Yep, so um, it, you should watch the interview I did with Ricks. In fact, this is a good moment to call it out if you I haven't have. seen it. It's excellent. Yeah, I think he highlights that this class of drugs there are, you know, genes get turned on and off. So there's a, you know, uh, what's called a, a gene expression cascade that occurs with certain compounds. So we know that the GLP-1 receptor agonist means that it binds to these GLP-1 sites, and there's a cascading effect of genes that then get expressed. And what that seems to do is turn off things like inflammatory markers. It turns on things like SIRT2 genes, which can actually increase cellular repair. So there seem to be other benefits from these drugs beyond just the appetite control. And it's not the appetite control itself, but there seems to be other effects. Let me ask you a question. Uh, from these uh, these receptors being activated. Would yep. you put your kids on this? No. Okay. Would you put your wife on this? I would consider it, and I would consider it for myself too, just for the anti-inflammatory effects. How will you make that decision? Well, for me personally, and the, the, the thing that I weigh against is the muscle loss and uh, the, the bone density loss. So I think that if you look at the, the biggest kind of effect on these on, a, on the downside basis is you should increase your protein in your diet, you have to do weightlifting, there's things that you would do. And frankly, if you do those things anyway, if you increase protein in your diet and do more weightlifting, you're actually gonna see very good health benefits from just doing those things that may actually it, outweigh it, the benefits it, yeah, you get from being on the GLP-1. I, I, so I, I have a question <laughs> you, Dave, which is, and this is the question is, when, when you look at that data and you talk to the, the CEOs, how much do you think really long-term when the long-term studies are out is going to be that it was the drug or just that being obese is very bad for you? 
And so when you take your body fat down dramatically, all these other gene expressions happen anyway, right? So totally. what, do you think it, which one will it well, be? Well, this is, this is what they're starting to isolate. And it's I will say, question. Antonio, they, they are starting to see that there are other expressions that are not related to the obesity and people that don't have obesity that they're using okay. that are using these drugs. So they're they're seeing that cohort data now. Clinical studies uh, phase two were published, and I think we're going to see phase three in some of these indications soon. But it is looking very positive that it's not just the loss of obesity. Now, to your point, being obese, not exercising, eating poorly destroys your health. You stop that. Shit. Right. Right. Everything gets better. Um, if you lift weights. Freebrook, can you tell us when you decide to do this? I will, yeah. If I if I do do a GLP-1 um, receptor agonist, I will let you guys know right now. I'm, I am I actually feel like I want to go through a process of increasing uh, my weightlifting routine more. I, I, you know, I've been trying to create a more kind of rigorous schedule. My schedule just sucks, so that's been the hardest thing for me. But I actually want to go through that first before making that decision. Why? Yeah, that would be kind of cool, David. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I was just curious, why why that order? I don't understand. I want to measure the effects. Because I do think that if you actually get into a, a regular weightlifting routine and you increase protein in your diet, which is another thing I've been making a, a concerted measured effort to do, uh, which is hard as a vegetarian, by the way, you see pretty significant uh, health effects. And so I'm trying to get through the process of increasing muscle composition before I'll make the decision on whether or not to add GLP-1. I don't want to kind of confound the two factors. You know what I did that made it super easy for me um, is I got uh, egg whites in a carton. Yeah, and I, then done I have that. the yeah. And I have this incredible uh, crunchy, spicy garlic thing that everybody in Momofuku and everybody makes and everybody's crazy about. Just in the mornings, I'll eat whatever it is, yeah. 10 ounces, 12 ounces of egg whites with that spicy stuff. It's delicious. It's awesome. And I just try to, you know, get that whatever 30, 40 grams of protein first thing in the morning. And then doing the rucking, well, this is is easy. Like you just wear a 35 pound weight vest, Freeberg, and you walk a mile or two and you will get like, my, pro you'll my feel problem, it. Jason, with all of this is that every time I see something, so I saw Gary Brecka on the Sean Ryan podcast recently, and Sean Ryan asks him, like, what are a handful of things that you recommend for everybody, right? And he recommends mineral salt, and then he recommends a methylated vitamin, he recommends amino acids, whatever, there's a protocol. Then if you happen to catch a clip on X of Andrew Huberman, he'll have a protocol. And then Brian Johnson has a protocol. And the problem is all these protocols are slightly the same, but they're just different enough where it creates a huge cognitive load in a normal person like myself, to your totally. point, Freeberg, who's totally. busy, who's got a job, who's got kids. How do you decide? And so I would really love something to be sort of like, I don't want to say gold standard because you can't say that, but that is like, what's the real bang for your buck? Mm. What Antonio said, you know, are you just better yeah. off just losing the 50 yep. pounds and then? This is why these products are successful and I think will be continue to grow pretty dramatically, Antonio, is because it is pop a pill and it solves all those problems. It doesn't require yeah. the cognitive load. And, and it effort. will be in yeah. a pill format soon, right? I mean, the pills are almost here. I think it would be very cool, actually, David, if you do this, uh, to Jamal's point about, you know, people being confused. If you did the every the every person's um, kind of story around this journey, and you documented totally. it, totally, you know, like you did, you did like this is my weight. I did weightlifting first, then I did the GOP one, and you actually did like a weekly thing where you checked in, and even it was ten minutes up on X or something, where you just gave people the journey um, yeah. in a way that wasn't so complicated. Because I think people are confused. Jamal's right. I mean, I have you know, I have very good doctors. You guys are good doctors, but if you don't, you don't know what to do. By the way, the, yeah. the problem for me, just to give you a sense of it, I had a doctor in LA, I had a doctor in San Francisco, I would have them do their own versions of things, then I would have somebody else help me compare. It cost me way too much money and all that complexity did was make the quality of my healthcare actually go down. Yeah. And instead, what I really wanted was just a very simple protocol that said, take the metformin because it's good for you, take the vitamin D, take the omega-3 fatty acids, otherwise just eat this meal plan. And it, it would help me a lot more than then I've had to cobble it together myself. Because by the way, when you see something like, you know, Gary Brecka is very, very articulate, very smart. But when I see him on the Sean Ryan podcast, the first thing I do is I go and populate an Amazon cart with all the things that he said, because my instinct is, well, I should do the right thing for myself. This is a couple hundred bucks. It's worth the investment. But then the day after, somebody else says something else. Hmm. 
You know, so I'll be you really have interested. have a little to- OCD though, Chamath. I've known you for a long time. You get very obsessive. With well, my father things. died because of poor yeah. health. My best friend died of poor health. I feel like you you should at least do the things that are preventable. Have you guys right. seen when that, you, that post Jamat did with you? He was like half naked in the mirror. He looks great, oh God. man. What are yeah, you talking about? Amazing. He looks great. If if you you could look like that, you'd, you'd do it too. No, no, no. I'm talking about like <laughs> when you had the glucose monitor. I'm sitting with him at the poker table. He's got the glucose monitor and he's taking a sip of wine. He's checking the glucose. He's taking the... He's having a, like a piece of brujut, then he's checking the glucose <laughs> monitor. It's just like literally he becomes obsessive. Then with the, you know, then we had a pedometer. Oh, yeah, there he is, oh, ripped I mean, come on. If, if that's I don't, what, this AI the, stuff, this generative the, AI. You know what's so uh, funny about this picture? All these, the clowns, AI. All, all these clowns Ridiculous. on the internet are like, they don't understand that when you're six foot two, these are big legs. When you're six Those foot two. Those are not two. big. So, <laughs> when, when, you're big legs. Legs. when you're a short king, when you're a short king, when you're a short king, when you're like I five lose seven, my I lost five, my eight. chopsticks. <laughs> when you're five seven, five eight, I get, I get it. Why you what guys? Because you guys are all stubby and short. I don't get it. I this get is it. the problem with generative AI. You can tell it's a fake photo. You can tell that that was generative yeah. AI because uh, nobody has legs that thin. Oh, How could you have biceps and then legs that thin? Makes sense. Look at this. Unbelievable. Uh, what a thirst so trap. Now you, now you guys are going to find photos of Antonio and I. We're going to throw them Unbelievable. all up. Unbelievable. You know, listen, I have, four pieces, your I have day. four pieces of advice for people. Number one, get good sleep. Number two, exercise. Number three, diet. Number four, meditation. And if you want to do that, it's very have simple. Kids. You get, you get the kids. calm meditation have app. Kids. You get the eight sleep sleep. You get the FitBot for All fitness, and then you get NutriSense <laughs> for your you get NutriSense. You, you got NutriSense for your diet. Those are the four things you focus on. <laughs> Make sure you have a good Athena. You get a good Athena system. All of this is brought to you by my NGO, which is All In NGO. USA gave us 18 million last year, guys. I forgot to tell you about it, but don't worry. It's in an offshore account for all of us. When we get back to oh Ethiopia and Vietnam, we have an all-in <laughs> castle built there, okay? We built uh, with our NGO. So good. We'll so see good. everybody next week. Love you, boys.